I'm Joe Kirschwink uh, from the California Institute of Technology, but currently in Japan. I'd like to tell you about some of the biophysical constraints about the human geomagnetic sensory system that we've worked out in the last couple of years. The first image here is just the background level of magnetic material in the brain. Uh, this is typically uh, the mineral magnetite. Uh, there are strings of magnetite you can extract from fish, and we've extracted uh, nanocrystals of magnetite from the human brain almost 30 years ago. The material is there. The question is, what is it doing? We know that many migratory and human, uh, uh, migratory and navigating animals uh, are able to use the magnetic field ranging from mollusks to arthropods to mammals. And recent studies have even shown that dogs are friendly dogs. You can train them to find a buried magnet. It really means they are consciously aware of the magnetic field. Now, we're not consciously aware of it, but it doesn't mean we don't have it. So two years ago, we published a paper uh, in, by the Society of Neuroscience, ENERO, demonstrating that uh, if you put a human in a controlled chamber, a Faraday cage, very quiet in the dark, and just rotate the magnetic field silently, comparable to turning your head from back to left to right, you can induce a drop in the alpha wave power of the brain. Now, the alpha waves, and, and we're pretty sure this is magnetite, the alpha waves are the 10 hertz resting uh, signal of the brain. This is just the uh, experimental setup. So uh, we can rotate the field gently clockwise or counterclockwise, or do control trials where there's no change or actually run the whole experiment with anti-parallel runs. But the anti-clockwise, counterclockwise things did not elicit this 10 hertz signal. These are one second at ticks. For your transform of that, this is the clear alpha wave power. If the magnetic field is perceived and rotated, that peak goes away. And that's visualized here by looking down at the brain uh, at the top of the head, nose, ears, by the power of the alpha waves. Anyway, that's a very clear response, but we can use that to do biophysics. So the question is, is it magnetite or is it electrical induction? So what we did is a simple experiment where we rotate the horizontal component of the magnetic field. If it's DBDT, uh, it doesn't matter the static up or down. What we found is it's only the down that works. Ergo, it's not electrical induction. That's out. The other major hypothesis is a quantum compass. You may have heard about birds and eyes and, and so forth. Well, a quantum compass has an interesting constraint. It can't tell polarity of the field. North from south is not resolved. So here's a very simple experiment we did, toggling the magnetic field down into the north or up into the south. The two uh, situations are anti-parallel. If it's a quantum campus, compass, it should not be able to distinguish this from that. Guess what it does beautifully? And we did this over and over again because there are so many bird biologists thinking it's a quantum compass. It's not a quantum compass. That really leaves magnetite. But saying what it is, uh, there are five Aristotelian senses, <clears throat> but uh, Aristotle didn't know about uh, magnetism, gravity, or temperature, pressure, time, and a number of other things. All the brain does to these senses is act like a computer and combines them and controls the behavior. And in our case, we actually have a funny response where this alpha wave is depending upon both gravity and magnetism. It's combining the two senses. And because gravity is a true sense, therefore, and it's combining it with magnetism to do this response, it means magnetism must also be a true sense. It makes sense and, people, and animals are using it. So why is this important? There are tens of thousands of people in our society who claim to have hypersensitivity to electromagnetic fields. They move to radio quiet areas. They're bothered by this. If you go to the Wikipedia page, it says this has no scientific basis. That's wrong. We've discovered there is a magnetic sense and it gives it a scientific basis and we understand it. The problem is the clinicians trying to do it use provocation trials. Here's the stimulus, can you detect it? And the answer is no. But that's nonsense, it's a subconscious one. So in conclusion, if somebody comes to you and says they have EMS hypersensitivity, don't dismiss them as crackpots. Even 
Jack Dorsey, CEO of Twitter, claims to have this problem. We'd like to have him as a subject, by the way. And if anybody knows him, please give him a shout to call me. Thank you.